Occupy Texas. Tell us a little bit about your film, and I'm Marcus with that nerd show. Jonathan Brownlee, and one of the producers on Occupy Texas. Um, Occupy Texas is a, it's a great local story. We shot it all here in Dallas with the support of you know, the Dallas community, which was really wonderful. And um, I was introduced to the, to the project through two great connectors, a guy named Steve Stachel, a woman named Catherine Cuellar. And the same day that uh, Jeff Berry, the director of the right. film, and Gene Gallerano, who stars and wrote the film, also a Dallas kid, uh, came in and they were asking, you know, who could help them with this film, and they both mentioned my name, and so I met these two incredibly handsome, talented, educated guys. <laughs> you know, everyone's got a script under their arm, right? Right. And then roll these guys, and I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be the ugly guy in the middle here, the ugly old guy. But uh, we sat down, and they had an amazing uh, project already, so I just really wanted to help support. You know, so they needed to raise some more money, so we did that. I really wanted to support Jeff's vision and Gene's vision on, on the film. Okay. Uh, so you're dealing, according to my notes here, yeah. uh, you're dealing with a washed-up occupier who, and when you use occupier, you're talking about like the Occupy movement? Wall Street, yeah. Okay. Comes home to, after the death of her parents to find, to be responsible for two teenage Right, teenage so, so the story is really a coming-of-age story for an adult, if you will, kind right. of a combination of, say, an Uncle Buck meets Little Miss Sunshine. Right. It's really about a, a Dallas kid who enters the Occupy Wall Street movement, he's kind of a golden child and kind of leaves it all behind. Enters right. the Wall Street movement, Occupy Wall Street movement, but stays after it's all over. So he's living under a bridge, basically, um, and his uncle Nolan finds him in New York to tell him that his parents have been killed in a car accident okay. in Dallas. So it's time for him to come home. So he comes home to Dallas to find out that his family, his parents, have left him everything, including the guardianship of his two younger sisters. So he really has to decide whether he's going to stay there and take up his responsibilities or go back to sort of his vagrant life. So it's also a clash of political ideals, too, when you, 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 you can be... Oh, Lord, I'm looking for. I just drew a blank. It happens. Yeah. But, you know, you can be inspired by everything, and then you have to be a realist at the end of the day. That's true, and he, he loves his sisters very much, and so it's it's a very, I mean, think about it. You know, you're in your early, mid-20s, and now you're given all this responsibility and right. the guardianship of your sisters, and his Aunt Uma is also there, prepared to step in. She played by amazing actress Perry Gilpin, um, is, a, is available to step in. So he does have the option to leave the right. sisters with her and go back. But I won't tell you how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to ruin it for I the know, audience. Exactly. That's why we do the film festival so you can go see the movie. Exactly right. Um, now the main character is actually from Texas. He just ends up in New York when he's younger, right? That, is it for, co for college? Yes, he's going to go and be a lawyer like his parents. Right. He's there really taking the tests, and he just in the middle of this thing gets up and for no reason walks out and disappears. Right. So you really are dealing with two uh, very different cultures and everything. Do you do you feel like this character is still very much a Texas boy in a lot of ways when he goes to New York, or does he become more New York? He's definitely Texas when he goes to New York, um, and but you know through osmosis and the Occupy movement, definitely becomes you know a very you know hip, if you will, modern vagrant. Right. Um, so really, you know, this New York City is a wash on him, definitely. Right. But, you know, you can't take the Texas out of the boy. No. So, I don't think you ever really truly lose your roots. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so when he comes back, he, you know, he's able to step back into his shoes somewhat. Um, are, is this film just much more of uh, a story about family and, and you know, humanity, or is it a little bit of trying to make a political commentary? You know, there's really no political commentary in the film. It's really all about family and about relationships, which in my mind is what makes a great, great film, great right. theater, great art. Um, so you know, we, weren't, we weren't trying to make a political statement. It was just a, a way that, you know, a vehicle to get to where we wanted to go. Right. Uh, when you came on board, they had already had the script and were ready to shoot. You just had to be, basically do your producer thing and help raise money and all that. Uh, what What is that experience like, especially, you know, here in Dallas, where it seems like there's always, there's a lot more filmmaking going on? 
Yeah, it's an interesting process coming on board uh, a, a project which is already established and, and, and well underway. And you know, Jeff and Gene have done a great job raising some some money already. And then, you know, we we started talking to people here, and again, guys like Steve Stodgill said, "Hey, why don't you, you know, we'll do a screening or something in your house, have a party, bring investors over." So, you know, really, this film didn't get made without the support of, right. of, of Dallas community. Everyone from like the aquarium gave us things. You know, we, we got all these locations for free and people jumped on board. Jeff Berry also won the, the Panavision Filmmaker grant, so that helped. And then we were able to raise the rest of the dollars. Really the majority of the funding for the film came from uh, from Texas. Cool. What's the biggest experience that you took away from this particular film? Um, it's a good question. You know, <laughs> in, indie filmmaking is is really hard, even in its best case scenarios. Right. And one of the things I, I took away, because I'd never shot a film in Dallas before, uh, I took away how important you know the community around you is, the the importance of your net your network and your connectivity to reach up. You know, reach out, pick up your phone, call someone who runs the aquarium, call someone who has a law office that you need to shoot in their boardroom, right. um, call someone you need to borrow their car. And everyone, you know, on this project said yes to us. And it was just a, a great experience on, uh, a great lesson to learn that people really want to help you. Sure. Um, you know, create what your art, if you will, help you make your film. They're very excited about doing that. Uh, and Dallas is a great partner with that. You think that's just a testament to filmmaking in Dallas compared to other places? I've made films and television shows in, in, in lots of other cities around the world, and I have to admit, I've never felt more embraced than working here in Texas and specifically in Dallas. I just haven't. If you could produce, direct, star in uh, Star Wars or Star Trek, what would you do? Oh, man, come on! <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, oh, that's a horrible question, and I love Chris Pine and the new ones. Um, oh, William Shatner, fellow Canadian, what am I supposed to say? Um, I would go Star Wars. Really? I would go Star Wars. Yeah. Um, just the 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 world that they that they created and continue to create with so many great characters. Do I have to pick a character that I want to play, or did they create a character for me? You can do, do I need either to call or. JJ Abrams isn't he doing both of these now? Or something? Like, I think I just have to pick up the phone and call JJ and say I'd like to be in both. That's really that's actually. So that's my answer. I'd like to be the new captain on the Starship Enterprise, and I'd also like to, you know, I mean, Hans Solo, you know, done. So perhaps there's a character that comes in that's that rebel, older guy that kind of fills those. Han Solo's best friend that we don't know about. Exactly. We grew up together. We went to college together, Han Solo and I. <laughs> and uh, I find out about his death, and I come for vengeance. There you go. Bam. That's the answer. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. You bet. Yeah, that's our little sound back for being that's on that cool. nerd show. All right, two things here. By the way, good job.